applies. Is your argument then, like Tony Abbott saying, if they're not doing it, why should we? Well, Isn't it a, a moral responsibility uh, as well as you well, can talk looking, economics mm, and, okay. and environmental, of course, that you should stick to the... Economy. Well, what does the Paris uh, Agreement actually achieve? We can do the maths, we can do the sums, and it's 0 0.05, one twentieth of one degree by the year 2100. That's what the Paris Agreement, all those cuts that every single nation, if they stick with mm. through to 2030, we say one twentieth of one degree. So you're saying so, they so shouldn't have signed up with it to begin with. Now what I'm saying Tony is, Abbott well, made a mistake. Well, what's been what's been signed up to is a Paris Agreement applicable to all, which it is no longer applicable to all. And we also need, if that's the case, the problem that we now have, let's take agriculture. We have to make large cuts in our agriculture sector if agriculture is going to do its fair share. Now, the problem we've got, if we reduce our herd sizes, all that means is herd sizes will pick up in the USA and places like South America to supply China. So there's no point having the cuts in Australia if those cuts are just going to be transferred from Australia and that production goes well, to other countries. Well, it's not just about that, of course. It's also about perhaps building a new coal-fired power stations. We'll get that in a moment, though. But, Pat, I, first... I have to respond. Craig's absolutely factually incorrect. For example, the US is still party to the Paris Accord. They can't pull out to the day after the next US presidential election in 2020. So who knows who will be president then? Secondly, China has committed to having their emissions peak by 2030. Their emissions have flatlined right now. So most people think they'll actually achieve their target well below that. The truth is only two countries didn't make commitments under the Paris Accord, Syria and Nicaragua. And as the highest uh, uh, emitter of emissions in the developed world, uh, uh, we need to make that on a per capita basis. We need to make that commitment. So what we're seeing from Craig and Tony Abbott is a crab walking away from a commitment they made willingly and knowingly what it uh, would result in. Even so, their targets are inadequate. So we shouldn't be talking about walking away from the Paris Treaty. We should be ramping up our commitment to meet what the rest of the world is doing in reducing emissions. And it's not 0.000, it whatever. It's like the the Paris, how much, the is Paris how much temperature does it change? to uh, restrict global warming to one and a half degrees above pre-industrial levels. That's a really important commitment if we're actually to achieve a sustainable planet and give our grandkids something they can actually enjoy.